Chris Taylor, you're a liar. You said you'd protect her. How could you let this happen to my sister? Chris whipped around, cradling his aching jaw from the blow that had just smashed into him. Devin glared at Chris, his fists clenched. Ariana's hand hovered over the intercom like she was about to call for security. Rage smoldered in Chris's chest, and he lunged for Devin, popping him twice in the face. Devin dropped to the ground, his eyes widening. Ariana covered her mouth with a hand. Chris seethed. How do you expect me to protect her when you're protecting a criminal? Devin cocked a brow. A criminal? What are you talking about? He lurched to his feet. No one knows how that document got in her office. There's no camera footage, nothing. You're useless. Chris pulled Devin to his feet roughly. Get out of my office. Devin jerked away from Chris's grip. Not until you promise to leave my sister alone. Chris turned for his office out of patience. And leave her to be preyed on by that criminal you call a best friend? I don't think so. Get out. Devin lunged for Chris. Ariana nearly jumped out of her chair. Sir, behind you! Chris turned just in time and shoved Devin against the wall. Devin growled and blood from his injured nose dripped down his shirt collar. What the hell are you talking about? I'm not friends with any criminals. Chris backed off, not wanting to injure Sabrina's brother more than he had already. So, who gave her those documents then? He held up a hand. If you want to talk, act civilly, and not like an animal. Devin wiped the blood off his chin onto his sleeve. Wait, you know who gave her that contract? Chris rolled his eyes. Ariana, get him a towel. Ariana rose from her chair. Yes, sir. Then she disappeared into the storeroom down the hall. Chris threw open his office door, startling Danny, who sat at Chris's desk wearing headphones. Danny pulled off the headphones and wrinkled his brow when he spotted Devin filing in after Chris. Chris pointed to Danny's computer. Play the video. Devin needs to see this. Danny spun his laptop around and pushed play. He'd enhanced the picture so there was no question about who was on the screen. It even had audio. Chris smirked. It was everything they needed to go viral. He watched the screen, frowning when he saw the huge smile Sabrina had given Martin. She'd never smiled at Chris like that. Martin strolled into view. How are you, Sabrina? Sabrina sipped her tea. I'm great. What brings you here today? Martin smiled at her. I was in the neighborhood and thought I'd stop by to say hi. He scanned the room casually before pointing behind Sabrina. Is that a bouquet from Chris? Sabrina turned to look behind her, and that snake Martin's hand shot out, dropping something into her tea. Sabrina turned back, her cheeks pinking slightly. Yes, Chris sent me those flowers this morning. She lifted her teacup and took a long sip. Sorry, where are my manners? Can I grab you a drink? Coffee, perhaps, or tea? Martin shook his head. No, I'm not staying long. I just wanted to stop by and say hi. Sabrina wobbled in her chair before taking another sip. Martin pulled a document out of his suit jacket. Hey, would you mind signing this document? I'm buying some assets and need a witness. Sabrina blinked repeatedly and rubbed her temples. What? An asset? Okay. Martin laid the papers in front of Sabrina on her desk. Just sign here. The pen scratched across the page as she signed. Martin pointed to another dotted line. Here too. Sabrina's shoulders were hunched and her words slurred. Is that all? I think I need to rest. Martin moved her hand toward one more spot, which Sabrina signed before her head hit the table. Then Martin dumped the rest of Sabrina's tea in the vase and refilled her cup before dropping the document into her desk drawer and leaving her office. Ariana entered with a towel as the video wrapped up. Here you are, sir. Devin lifted his wide eyes off the screen and grabbed the towel with shaking fingers. Thank you, 
Chris crossed his arms. Did you see that? Devin nodded numbly and cleared his throat. <clears throat> Do you mind? I'd like to wash my face. Chris pointed to his attached washroom and small bedroom just off the office. Right through there. Devin blanched as he entered the room. Pictures of Sabrina hung over every wall in Chris's living space. There was the one that went viral of Chris carrying Sabrina in his arms. Pictures of her at the hospital, too. And lots of the two of them dressed up at some event or another. Devin shook his head. When did Chris become obsessed with Sabrina? Before or after the divorce? He thought Chris was in Sabrina's life just because of the baby, but some of these pictures were taken before Chris found out about Sabrina's pregnancy. Was he still in love with her? Or was he just possessive of her because she was carrying his child? Is that why he didn't want Martin close to her? Devin called over his shoulder. Chris, what in the world is up with this room? Chris froze. He'd forgotten all about the pictures. Only Danny knew the truth about his feelings for Sabrina. Chris never intended to let Devin in on his secret. He lurched into the side room and grabbed Devin's arm, pulling him out. You can use the staff washroom. Ariana will show you. A bolt of empathy struck Devin. Chris clearly still had feelings for Sabrina. And yet, what about Brenda? What about all the other women? Why wouldn't Chris want to be with Sabrina if he truly loved her? Devin tugged his arm free as the memory of how his sister had been wrong chased the empathy away. I've already seen it all. Just let me wash up here. Chris sighed. Fine. Devin chuckled. <laughs> so, how long have you been in love with my sister? Chris spat out coldly. None of your business. Devin scrubbed the dried blood off his face. I don't see how you can be in love with a woman while you're sleeping around like a dog. Chris ignored the dig, but Danny spoke up. You don't believe that people change, Devin? We all make mistakes. At least Chris has been correcting his. Devin glared at Danny before turning to Chris. You can give it a rest. I'll never forgive the way you treated my sister, Chris. It was like you were deliberately trying to hurt her. Chris slammed a hand against the wall. I did. I wanted to hurt her, he exhaled. They forced me to marry Sabrina when all I wanted to do was find the woman who donated my kidney and saved my life. I knew we belonged together. Devin cocked a brow. Don't tell me you thought Brenda was your donor. Danny cut in. The bitch told him before the transplant that she was going to give him her kidney. So what did you expect him to think? Devin reeled. That explained so much. Maybe I can help you with Sabrina. Chris shook his head. No. When I win her back, it will be because of my effort. I'm not taking any shortcuts this time. Devin shrugged. Good luck with that. My sister is as stubborn as they come. He tossed the dirty towel on the sink and pointed to the laptop. Can I see the video again? Danny smirked. I already sent it to your phone. Devin unlocked his phone and pressed play. Tears pooled in his eyes. I trusted Martin with my life. And look how he repaid me. Chris began. His sister, Danny cut in. Don't waste your breath. He won't believe you. Devin frowned. I won't believe what? Chris sat at his desk and waved a hand dismissively. Forget it. You have the video. Just go. Devin stalked over to the door but paused with his hand on the knob as a thought struck him. It's you, isn't it? You're the one giving the money to my father? Chris was already prepared for that question. Your family has all the resources they need. You don't need my help. Ask your father where he got the money from. Devin crossed his arms. One more question. Where'd you get that footage? Chris cocked a brow. 
I have my ways. No way could Chris tell him about the secret camera, but hopefully Devin wouldn't press too hard. Luckily, the answer seemed to appease Devin. Thank you. I have to go. Once Devin left, Chris leaned back in his desk chair and dialed Jacob's number. Jacob answered on the first ring. Hello? Chris didn't bother with any pleasantries. I have the proof. Sending the video to you now. Call me back after you've watched it. He hung up and got a call back soon after. Jacob didn't bother with pleasantries this time either. My poor girl. At least whatever Martin gave her didn't affect the pregnancy. Chris sighed. <sighs> She's carrying twins. We just found out. Jacob sucked in a sharp breath. Are you sure? Chris nodded. Yes. Listen, Jacob. I'm sorry about this mess. But Sabrina's birthday is in a few days. I'm hoping the celebration will cheer her up and I can prove how much she means to me. Jacob sighed. Oh, it's better to try and fail than not try at all. Chris tapped his fingers on his desk. What are we going to do about Martin? Jacob considered that for a moment before replying. I'm not as worried about him as I am about Mara. Who knows what evil plan she is working on? Chris's fingers stilled. You have a point. Martin is as good as done for now that we have that footage. Jacob's voice filled with relief. I'm grateful for that, son. And now that Martin has been exposed as a liar, maybe Devin will finally listen to me about Mara being alive. Chris smirked. Devin just left here, actually. He was feeling protective enough to cold clock me when I got back to the office. But don't worry. We had a little chat. I think it's safe to say things are resolved between us now. Jacob sounded surprised. Oh? Chris snorted. <laughs> he even offered to help me win Sabrina back. Jacob chuckled. <laughs> Good. Sounds like he's starting to trust you. Chris smiled. At least one good thing had transpired today. Too bad it took a fist fight to get Devin to see reason. Meanwhile, Devin made his way across town. He left Chris's office and headed straight to another. Martin's. Anger fueled his trip so much that he barely remembered the drive. Shaking with rage, he shoved open the door to his best friend's office. What was Devin there to do? Would he confront Martin the same way he confronted Chris? With violence? Devin stormed across Martin's office and kicked him in the stomach. You asshole! I trusted you, you dirty scumbag! Martin staggered back but managed to stay on his feet. What the hell, Devin? I'm doing this for Sabrina so she'll marry me. I thought that's what you wanted too. Martin had been on his way out the door with his briefcase, planning to bring home the documents his sister Mara needed to sign, when Devin surprised him. Now Devin stood there, fuming, clearly thinking the worst. Martin had to convince Devin that he'd only made Sabrina sign the contract for her own good. Devin smiled cruelly and lunged. His fist landed on Martin's face three times in quick succession. Martin took the beating without retaliating. After all, he had kept Devin in the dark about his plans. After the last hit, Martin crashed into his desk, sending paperwork flying and knocking his briefcase to the floor. The briefcase snapped open. Martin dropped to the floor and scrambled to scoop up all the paperwork. Devin spotted a contract on the floor, one that looked just like the document his sister had been tricked into signing in her office. Devin kicked Martin in the jaw when he reached for the contract. Blood spurted everywhere, splattering the floor and the scattered paperwork. Devin snatched the thick, stapled contract off the floor. <laughs> you drugged my sister? Lied to her and made her sign some fake documents because you want to marry her? He tore the documents in half. <laughs> Over my dead body. Martin stared at the ruined paperwork and his heart sank. There were only two originals. One he'd left with Sabrina. Tears burned in his eyes as he watched Devin shred the second. No! What have you done? Devin snarled. What I had to. Good luck getting her to marry you now. 
Martin roared. Don't you see? I had to! She would have turned me down to take care of the bastard child Chris put in her belly if I had enforced her hand. Hell, Chris would probably force her to marry him too. Regret slammed into Martin, hard. He should have made a copy. He'd even considered handing it to his assistant when he got back to the office, but he'd refrained out of fear and the need for secrecy. What if someone tried to buy off his assistant like they had with his maids? Now that decision haunted him. Devin jabbed a finger in Martin's chest. My sister is not some business commodity you can bully your way into owning. Devin shook his head. You could have seriously hurt her with those drugs. At least Chris never drugged her. She'd be better off with him than you. Disgust spread through Martin's gut. How could his best friend think that? There was no way Chris was better for Sabrina than Martin. Martin struggled to his feet. <laughs> That's laughable. You know Chris can't keep it in his pants. He has another woman pregnant already. How many more do you think are going to pop out of the woodwork? Devin shoved Martin's shoulder. So what? At least Sabrina knew what she was getting into when she married him. You're just a wolf in sheep's clothing. Martin blanched and his chin wobbled. He reached out a hand. Devin. Devin smacked Martin's hand away. Don't. You and I have nothing in common. Our friendship ends now. He tore up the contract again and again, then tossed the shredded mess on the floor. Martin's stomach dropped as he watched his best friend sneer at him like he was nothing. This was all Mara's fault. As Martin thought of his sister, he felt a glimmer of hope. Earlier that day, he'd snapped photos of the contract to send to Mara. Maybe he still had options after all. Martin dumped an armload of papers on his desk. <sighs> so you're just going to let your sister get back with Chris? After everything he did to her? After all the humiliation he caused her? Devin crossed his arms. I hope Chris wins Sabrina back. He's changed for the better while you've shown everyone what a fraud you are. Martin leaned over his desk, feeling like his world was imploding. What was I supposed to do? Chris kicked me out of Sabrina's life. I was desperate. Devin's eyes flashed with anger. Desperate enough to drug her and lie to her? Martin closed his eyes. It took her years to warm up to me. Years. Then when she finally did, that idiot Chris started showing up left and right. Devin groaned. I don't want to hear your sad excuses. She's having his baby. Of course he wants to spend time with her. Martin looked up. Just because he wants to doesn't mean he should. Chris would only hurt her again. He'd proven time and time again that he didn't deserve Sabrina's love. The glass shattered as Devin stomped on a fallen photo that had been on Martin's desk. So, you want to keep a father away from his child? What kind of solution is that? Martin scowled. One that would keep Sabrina safe. He jabbed a thumb at his chest. One where we could be a family. Sabrina should be my wife. I would take care of that baby better than Chris ever will. Devin laughed caustically. <laughs> well, that didn't happen, did it? And you know what? I'm glad. If Chris never chased you away, I would never have known what a lying, conniving, sneaky bastard you are. How dare he? Anger burned in Martin's gut. If Devin stooped to name-calling, Martin needed to remind him who had the upper hand in this office. Martin's face turned red and he puffed up his chest. I'd watch what you say if I were you. I'll be your boss in two days. Devin toppled one of Martin's office chairs onto the floor. That's not happening. You'll see. We have enough proof to send your sorry ass to jail. Martin backed away. The knowledge that his sister had the security camera footage deleted helped him answer brazenly. Lies. I did nothing wrong. An evil smirk crossed Devin's face. Hmm. <laughs> sure. Let's just wait for the news tomorrow. Devin drew his fist back and clocked Martin again, landing a hard blow to his gut that made Martin keel over, clutching his stomach. Devin headed for the door, pausing before making his exit. That's for drugging my pregnant sister.
You're lucky her baby's still alive or you'd be going away for murder. Devin left Martin's office and headed for his father's house. After the long day he just spent dealing with the men who thought they deserved his sister, he needed to see Sabrina for himself. He had to make sure she was okay. Devin breathed out a sigh the moment he spotted her. He found Jacob, Sabrina, Lizzie, and Matilda seated in the dining room eating dinner. Matilda sprang up from the dining room table and hurried to give him a hug. She did a double take when she spotted his bruised face. What happened, Devin? You look like you got into a fight. Devin kissed her softly and tried to play it off. It's nothing. He sat down, but despite the delicious platters laid out in front of him, he couldn't summon the desire to eat. Matilda clicked her tongue. Don't tell me those bruises just magically appeared. Devin grabbed the empty glass at his place setting. Curse hit me. Sabrina gasped. She dropped her fork and covered her mouth with her hands. Chris did that? Matilda's and Lizzie's eyes widened and everyone leaned in, waiting to hear what happened. Devin poured himself a glass of wine. I accused him of not keeping his word and we fought, but it's okay. We cleared the air between us afterward. At least we got... Before Devin could finish, he was interrupted by his dad. Jacob's fork clattered on his plate. Devin, can we talk in the study? Devin nodded, looking surprised. Sure, Dad. They both stood and disappeared into the hall. Sabrina pursed her lips. I swear they're hiding something. Dad's been quiet all day long. Now they need to talk in private? Matilda shrugged. If they are keeping secrets, then maybe it's for your own good. You just got out of the hospital. I'm sure they just don't want to worry you if they don't have to. Sabrina nodded absently. I'm sure you're right. She turned to Lizzie. So, how was work? Lizzie groaned, looking exhausted. Oh, please don't ask. It's been so stressful with Devin gone the entire afternoon. Sabrina frowned. Devin was out of the office all day, and he got into a fight with Chris? What is going on? Matilda leaned forward. I bet it has to do with Martin. If Devin was mad enough to confront Chris, I wonder what Chris said to him. Sabrina shivered and pushed the food on her plate around with her fork. I still can't believe it. Martin always seems so sweet. How could he do this to me? Matilda patted Sabrina's hand. The proof will come out. You'll see. She suspected Chris would be the one to provide it. He'd certainly handle things expertly when Matilda was in trouble. She doubted Chris would let anything stand in the way of helping Sabrina. Sabrina sighed. Oh, I hope so. She wrinkled her nose. Can you believe Martin actually expected me to marry him? Lizzie shook her head, then changed the subject. How was the scan? Sabrina brightened slightly. Interesting. They found out we're having twins. Lizzie squealed. <gasps> oh my god, really? We need to celebrate. She jumped up from the table and gave Sabrina a hug. Lizzie frowned at Matilda. I thought you were at the hospital too. Why is this the first time I'm hearing this? Matilda shrugged and lifted her glass. I wasn't about to be the one to spill this incredible news. Lizzie gave Sabrina another squeeze. This is amazing. I bet you're thrilled, Sabrina. But Sabrina couldn't match their enthusiasm. Honestly, I don't know how I feel about it. We're divorced and now I'm going to be a baby mama to not just one, but two of his children? She twisted her hands in her lap. What if there are complications? Chris won't let me out of his sight then. Matilda studied Sabrina's face. I don't get it. Why does this change anything? Unless... Matilda cocked her head sideways. Sabrina, are you still in love with Chris? Sabrina dropped her napkin and froze. Matilda and Lizzie looked at each other with slight smirks on their faces. Sabrina's mind raced. She wasn't prepared for that question and realized she didn't know how to answer it. Was she still in love with Chris after all this time? 
And if so, was she about to admit it at the dinner table? Sabrina sat in silence for a long while after Matilda asked her that burning question. Was she still in love with Chris? The answer was complicated, but one fact would always remain. Chris hurt Sabrina more than anyone else in the world, and she could never forget that. Sabrina's greatest shame was being so in love with a man that she wasted years trying to get Chris to return that love. But it didn't feel right to lie to her best friend. Sabrina took a long sip of water before finally turning back to Matilda. Love is what got me into this mess. Whether or not I love him isn't what's important. Matilda nodded, understanding what Sabrina meant. But what if Chris changed? For what it's worth, I believe he has. Sabrina shook her head. He's changed for the baby, not for me. I can't be in a loveless marriage. Never again. There was a lot of tension in their marriage, but for Sabrina, the biggest issue between her and Chris was that she was unable to get pregnant. Chris never made any effort towards her until he learned she was carrying his children. He didn't love her. He loved the twins. Sabrina smiled bitterly at the thought. Matilda sighed. Hmm. <laughs> she knew it wasn't the truth. Chris had come to truly love Sabrina for who she was, pregnant or not. But Matilda didn't want to push her best friend too far. Sabrina was still in a fragile state. Matilda thought carefully about her next words. Why don't we test him to see why he's changed? Sabrina raised an eyebrow. What kind of test? Matilda smirked and leaned in, whispering in Sabrina's ear. Sabrina frowned. That would take at least six months. Matilda shrugged her shoulders. It would work, though. And wouldn't it be worth it to find out the truth? Sabrina fidgeted. I don't know. Sabrina was admittedly curious. Chris's behavior had changed so drastically in the last couple of months. Was there a chance it was for her and not just for the babies? Sabrina rubbed her belly. Maybe it was worth it to find out the truth. She wanted nothing more than to have a family for her children. If there was a chance of that, Matilda smirked, knowing Sabrina was intrigued. Think about it. He hasn't been sleeping around like he used to. He's been attentive. He's been everything he wasn't during your marriage. You think that's all for a baby that hasn't even been born yet? Sabrina looked at Matilda. It was true. As far as she knew, Chris hadn't been with women like he used to be. Matilda leaned back in her chair. Here's the thing. Even if it's true that he's doing it all for you, you don't have to take him back, but at least you'd know. Sabrina sighed and looked across the table to Lizzie, who only shrugged. Finally, Sabrina nodded. Devin paced in his father's office, anger rising with each step, and thought about how his best friend had betrayed him. Devin turned to his father. Dad, I trusted him. Jacob nodded solemnly. I know, son. I'm sorry. Devin finally stopped pacing. Where did you get the money to buy back the shares? Was it Chris? Jacob rubbed his forehead. Not entirely. Devin examined his father. Dad, tell me the truth. If he saved my ass... Jacob smiled. He saved your sister's ass. Devin collapsed into the chair across from Jacob. It's all my fault. I introduced Sabrina to Martin. I wanted to see them together. If it weren't for me, none of this would have happened. Jacob leaned in and patted Devin's shoulder. If I tell you the truth, promise not to tell Sabrina. It's not my secret to tell. Devin nodded. Jacob leaned back again, sighing. <sighs> Chris's father left a gift for Sabrina for saving Chris's life. Chris knows that Sabrina would never take it, so he's keeping it safe for her. Devin nodded but frowned. If Chris found out Sabrina was the one who saved his life, that must be why he's being so kind to her, not because he truly loved her. Devin scoffed. <laughs> so that's why he's suddenly so nice. Jacob shook his head. No. Chris's change of heart started long before he found out the truth. Devin couldn't help feeling jealous of how Jacob spoke about Chris. Sometimes you seem to like Chris more than me, Dad. Jacob chuckled. 
<laughs> well, he certainly listens to me more than you do. Devin frowned. What's that supposed to mean? Jacob looked his son in the eye. I warned you about Mara. And by extension, Martin. Devin stiffened. So, it's true. Mara is alive? Jacob nodded. Chris has proof. Devin covered his face. Regret filled him. He trusted Martin so blindly that he didn't believe his father. He didn't believe. Realization hit Devin like a truck. Matilda. She mentioned Mara to me once before. I shut her down because I didn't believe her. And I asked her not to say anything to Sabrina because I thought it would upset her. Devin got up and pulled open the door, calling down the stairs. Matilda? Can you come up to my dad's office? Matilda poked her head in and Devin waved her inside. She sat down next to Jacob and waited as Devin started pacing again. Finally, he crouched in front of his fiancée. Matilda, a while back, you mentioned Mara. Matilda stiffened. Yes, I did. Devin sighed and continued. What were you trying to tell me? Matilda froze. She was scared of sharing this truth with Devin. She wasn't sure why he was asking her now. Devin sensed her hesitation. I'm sorry. I know I didn't believe you last time, but this time I will, I promise. Matilda loosened a bit. She's alive. I saw her. Devin's brow furrowed. Who have you told? Matilda bit her lip. She knew the answer would upset Devin, but she didn't want to lie to him anymore. I told Chris. Remember the blonde woman you saw with him? That was me. I had to tell someone, and at the party when you thought Chris was flirting with me, I was handing him a thank you note. Devin rocked back on his heels. For what? Matilda glanced toward Jacob, who nodded encouragingly. Matilda sighed. <laughs> Sabrina was worried about me. Chris wanted to help her, so he found a way to clear my name. I also have every reason to believe that Martin is protecting Mara. I told Chris not to tell you what I was up to because Martin's your best friend. Devin dropped his head in shame. He didn't believe his own fiance, so she had to turn to Chris. I'm sorry, Matilda. I should have believed you. Matilda smiled, reaching for his hand. It's okay, Devin. Devin stood, clenching his fists. I should have dragged Martin to the police station instead of leaving that snake at his office. Matilda's eyes widened. You went over there? Devin sighed. I confronted him after I learned about the contract. Matilda's brows furrowed. We can't tell Sabrina about that. Not yet. After everything with Martin and learning about the twins. Devin cut her off. Twins? His jaw dropped as he looked back and forth between Matilda and his dad, who nodded confirmation of the news. Matilda smiled. <laughs> she found out today. Despite his anger, Devin couldn't help but grin. He pulled Matilda to her feet and into a big hug. But this happiness was short-lived when his mind wandered back to Martin and Mara. Devin grasped his fiancé's shoulders and looked into her eyes. Matilda, I need you to be careful. You're one of the few people who knows Mara is alive. That's dangerous information to have. Matilda nodded gravely, glancing at the door. I should get back downstairs, or the girls would think I'm in on whatever secrets you two are discussing. Jacob chuckled, and Devin saw her to the door before turning back toward his dad. I've been so foolish. I should have believed you and Matilda. Jacob nodded. Don't beat yourself up. You learn from this and you move forward. Devin smiled. He didn't deserve how kind his father was, always caring more about others than himself, just like Sabrina. Jacob gestured toward the empty chair. If it makes you feel better, Martin won't get away with it. Chris doesn't intend to go easy on him. Devin collapsed into the seat. <sighs> Good. Devin didn't plan on going easy on Martin either. He vowed to find a way to destroy his former best friend. Devin looked up. What gift did Chris's father leave Sabrina? Jacob frowned, hesitating. Devin sighed. I promise I'll keep it to myself. Jacob nodded slowly and took a deep breath. 
Hundreds of pure, raw diamonds. Worth billions of dollars. Devin's jaw dropped. What? Jacob laughed at the dumbfounded look on his son's face. He was equally shocked when Chris had told him earlier that day. Raymond was my best friend, and he loved Sabrina like a daughter. Devin picked his jaw off the floor. When do you plan on telling her? Jacob shook his head. I don't plan on telling her anything. Chris will tell her when the time is right. He doesn't plan on touching the diamonds. It's for Sabrina to decide what to do with them. Devin nodded in agreement. Do you think Chris loves Sabrina? Jacob thought about his answer. Chris was very young when he lost his mother. He never truly dealt with it and found other outlets for his grief. I'm not saying I approve of how he treated her. Sabrina was so in love with Chris I didn't want to deny her the marriage. And Raymond thought that if someone could come into Chris's life who truly loved and took care of him, that Chris would eventually come around. Jacob smiled bitterly. <laughs> and I think he did. But it was too late. Devin stared at his hands as his mind raced, putting the pieces together. Chris believed Brenda was the one who saved his life. He wanted to be married to the woman he thought loved him enough to do that. He just didn't know it was actually Sabrina. Jacob rubbed his eyes. Sabrina wanted to keep it a secret. If she hadn't, maybe she never would have suffered. But I understand why she did it. She didn't want Chris to love her just because she saved his life. That's not true love. Something tugged at Devin. If Brenda was willing to lie about saving his life, do you think she's even pregnant? Jacob shook his head. I doubt it. Chris let Brenda's father's company fail. I think Chris would have bailed Kurt out if Brenda was truly pregnant. Devin turned to his father and looked at him earnestly. No more secrets. I don't want to be in the dark when it comes to this family anymore. Anything you tell me, I'll believe you. Jacob smiled and nodded. There is one thing you should know. Chris mentioned making things up to Sabrina on her birthday. Devin raised an eyebrow, realizing what this meant. He is going to deal with Martin then. Downstairs, Sabrina and Matilda continued to hang out after dinner. Sabrina took out her phone to see a text from Devin. Why is my brother texting me from upstairs? She chuckled, rolling her eyes and opened the text, reading, This goes viral tomorrow. Sabrina raised an eyebrow, curious. She waved Matilda over to watch over her shoulder. Matilda walked over and Sabrina pressed play on the video below Devin's text. Sabrina went cold at the evidence of Martin slipping something into her drink and forcing her to sign the bogus contract. She dropped her head into her hands. <sighs> Why would Martin do something like this? Her head whipped back up, disbelief turning to anger. And then, to have the nerve to ask me to marry him? Matilda sighed. Well, with this, maybe your father won't have to buy back all those shares? Sabrina bit her lip. Why would my dad tell the press he would be able to do that? He doesn't have that kind of money. Matilda shrugged. Maybe you should ask. Sabrina stretched out on the living room couch. If they insist on staying upstairs and keeping secrets, I'm not climbing those stairs. Sabrina pulled up her brother's number. Devin picked up, sounding amused. Did you watch it? Sabrina tensed. Yes, it's horrible. But Devin, why would Dad tell everyone he could buy back the shares when he can't? Devin hesitated, hearing the concern in Sabrina's voice. He wished he could tell her the truth, but he promised his father he would wait for Chris to be the one to explain things to Sabrina. Devin wasn't sure what to say. How could he throw Sabrina off the scent of the secret diamonds without worrying her further? Devin hesitated slightly, trying to think of what he could tell Sabrina. She wanted to know why their father lied to the press about having the money to buy back the shares from Martin. But it wasn't Devin's place to tell her that Sabrina secretly owned billions of dollars worth of diamonds. Devin promised to let Chris break the news to her. Sabrina's voice sounded impatient on the phone. Devin, are you still there? 
Devin took a deep breath. <sighs> Dad does have the money. He kept it a secret from us because he wanted us to make our own way. He didn't want us to be too reliant on him. I was worried too, so I just asked him and he confirmed. Sabrina sounded unsure. Then why did Dad support my marriage to Chris? If we were fine financially, I didn't need to marry him. Devin winced and hurried to cover his tracks. Apparently, this is a new development. Dad made back a lot of money in the last couple of years. It's why he wanted you to come back to the company. Sabrina let out a sigh of relief. Oh, well, that's great because we have to get the shares back from Martin. Sabrina wasn't sure what the next steps were, but she was exhausted. Between her latest hospital visit and carrying twins, she didn't know if she had it in her to figure out how to dig the family business out of this mess. She hoped Devin would lead the way, seeing as Martin was his lying, stealing ex-best friend. Devin sensed Sabrina's exhaustion. I've already destroyed one of the documents. I went to Martin's and confronted him. You have a copy, right? Sabrina stretched out on the couch, frowning. Yes, I have a copy. Devin nodded. There were only two documents in the video, so if you have one and I destroyed one... Sabrina sat up. Then there's no evidence that I signed off the shares? Devin smirked. Exactly. Sabrina bit her lip. What if Martin has soft copies? Devin sighed. Don't worry about that. I'll speak to our lawyers and see what we should do. I'll keep you posted. Devin had no intention of speaking to a lawyer... He knew that he had to turn to Chris for help with this, but Sabrina didn't have to know that. Meanwhile, Martin sweated the entire drive back to his house. The way Devin and Chris had spoken to him today was like nothing he'd ever experienced before. For the first time ever, Martin was afraid for his life. Martin knew that he had to talk to Mara. She was an expert at covering up her tracks, and he needed some clarity from her. He pulled up to his mansion and headed straight to Mara's room. As he passed them in the hallway, some of the maids looked at him in horror, noticing the bruises and marks on his face. Martin ignored them and barged into Mara's room. Mara looked up and gasped. <gasps> Martin, what happened? Who did this to you? Martin finally glanced at himself in the mirror and realized how beat up he looked. Chris and Devin came after me. He turned back to Mara, his eyes cold. Because of you, Mara. Mara bit her lip, feeling horrible that Martin took the brunt of the consequences of her plans. She was so focused on destroying Sabrina that she had forgotten Sabrina had a team of people rallying around her. People who were powerful and dangerous. Mara wanted Sabrina to suffer, but didn't imagine a scenario where the man she loved would pay the price instead. Mara held out her hand, looking apologetic. Let me get someone to clean your wounds. Martin shook his head. He didn't care about the bruises. Forget that. Devin and Chris are certain I drugged Sabrina. How could they know? You said you wiped everything, right? Mara froze. Peter had never let her down before. If he said everything was wiped, she trusted that he had finished the job. Mara shook her head. They're just playing mind games, Martin. Don't worry about them. Martin shook his head. No. You didn't see them. The looks on their faces. They were furious. Why would they be that intense if they weren't sure? Mara didn't know what to say. Martin stepped toward the side of her bed, picking up her phone. Call your hacker. Make sure. His heart pounded. If evidence of what he did was out there, he'd be done for. Mara sighed. <sighs> I already confirmed with him earlier. Mara wanted to avoid talking to Peter after telling him about her pregnancy. Martin held the phone out to her, insisting, Call him again. I want to speak to him. Mara shook her head. That's not a good idea. Peter was so angry when she'd broken things off. She wanted to give him time to cool off. But the look on Martin's face told her he wouldn't give up until she called Peter. Martin dropped the phone in her lap and crossed his arms. Do it, Mara. It's my ass on the line, not yours. Mara was boxed into a corner. Martin wouldn't leave, and as far as he was concerned, Mara couldn't leave. 
Martin loosened his necktie and sat down, staring daggers at Mara. Mara gritted her teeth and reluctantly picked up her phone. She dialed Peter. Martin raised an eyebrow. Put it on speaker. Mara steeled herself and did as she was told. Mara crossed her fingers, hoping that if Peter picked up, he wouldn't reveal anything he had on her. Judging by the look on Martin's face, now wasn't the right time to reveal she had been lying to him about pretty much everything. Hello, no one is available to take your call. Mara let out a sigh of relief when the call went to voicemail. Well, he's not there. Are you happy now, Martin? But something tugged at her. Peter never ignored her calls. Martin fumed. He wasn't happy at all. How could he be when there was a good chance that a video footage of him poisoning Sabrina was out there and there was no way to get rid of it? Mara's worry grew. Peter must be furious with her if he didn't pick up. But just how angry was he? Was he angry enough to expose all her secrets? Mara kicked herself for being so reliant on someone like Peter. But he was the best at what he did. She didn't even know how to look for him if she couldn't get a hold of him over the phone. He was an expert at covering his tracks. And that's why she hired him. But that's also why he held so much power. And if he was no longer on her side, Mara no longer had that power either. Martin raised an eyebrow, suspicious. But he decided not to push it. We should leave, Mara. We need to get out of here. Mara hesitated. This mansion was designed for her comfort, and she grew to be reliant on its convenience. It was also built to hide her secrets. She couldn't just leave. There were too many people onto the fact that she was alive. If she left the mansion and showed her face in public without a decent hacker to keep her off security feeds, there would be a lot of eyes out there dying to confirm her whereabouts. Mara crossed her arms. Why do we need to leave, exactly? She made sure her voice dripped disapproval of Martin's plan with every word that came out of her mouth. Martin rubbed his forehead. Chris and Devin will not stop, Mara. They're out for blood. My blood. Mara sighed. <sighs> what about your company? Martin nodded. The managers already have instructions for me, and I can communicate with them remotely. Work is handled. Now's our chance to go. Mara shook her head. Martin assumed she was worried about her condition and gestured toward the door. We can bring help along. Glenda or Annabelle will join us, of course. The rest of the staff can take care of the house while we're away. Mara frowned at Martin. And where are we going, exactly? Martin shrugged. I haven't thought that far ahead, but we'll figure it out. Mara raised an eyebrow. I think, given my condition... It would be best to figure it out before we leave, Martin. This place is safe. It's a fortress made for the very purpose of keeping me a secret. No one will find us if we stay put. Martin sighed. Mara had a point. He dropped his shoulders and softened his gaze. You're right. Mara sighed with relief. Martin pulled some papers out of his briefcase. I brought the documents for you to sign. Mara's face lined with worry. If she signed the documents she thought these were, she would lose control over Martin. Can't we wait a while? You haven't named me as the owner of Sabrina's company yet. Finish that first, and I'll sign. Martin looked at her curiously. He felt something was off. Mara rolled her eyes. Martin, I know you still love her. I need to have proof that she has nothing before I can sign off. This is my revenge, and I will have it. Martin clenched his fingers hard enough that he wrinkled the papers. You were the one who tried to kill her. Remind me how what happened to you was her fault? Mara's eyes turned glassy. She was jealous of the way Martin spoke about Sabrina. How ardently he defended her. It only made her hate Sabrina more. She cocked her head. So, you're on Sabrina's side now? Martin glared. Stop it, Mara! Sabrina never did anything to you. You're the one who's so obsessed with her. Mara's mouth fell open. Martin had never spoken to her like that before. Martin did not break his sister's gaze. He felt emboldened. Sabrina, the woman he loved, hated him because of Mara. Mara's lip trembled. Martin, I'm your sister. 
Don't you love me too? Martin paced the floor. Mara, it's different. You know it's different. Of course I love you. You're my sister. But I'm in love with Sabrina. And thanks to you, she hates me now. Mara's heart shattered in her chest. All she wanted was for Martin to love her like he loved Sabrina. She wanted to scream that they weren't really siblings, but she held back. Martin was too hung up on Sabrina, and this wasn't the right time. Martin stuffed the papers back in his bag, looking defeated. Mara squinted suspiciously. You want me to sign off so you can give everything back to her? Martin stiffened. She'd read his mind, but he shook his head in disappointment. I'm going. Goodbye, Mara. Martin got up for work the next day and checked himself in the mirror. His face looked better than it had the day before. The morning was peaceful as he got ready and ate his breakfast. Martin checked his phone. He furrowed his brow in worry. Colleagues were blowing up his phone saying he was trending on the internet. Martin took a deep breath. What could it be? He put his name into the search bar of the browser and steeled himself before clicking enter. What was Martin about to see? And would it be as bad as he feared? Martin looked in horror at his phone. Headline after headline after headline. And all of them accused him of drugging Sabrina. Maybe he could recover from this. Maybe this was all just speculation and the only proof they had was Chris's word. His heart sank when he saw one of the articles attached to a video. Martin hesitated but steeled himself to press play. Sure enough, there it was. Footage of him drugging Sabrina. He went cold. Chris and Devin weren't bluffing. They had the proof, and they leaked it. Martin got up and headed straight to Mara. Mara, you promised your hacker wiped all the footage from Sabrina's office! Mara woke up startled by the rude awakening. Martin... Calm down. What's the problem? Martin shoved his phone in Mara's face. Her eyes went wide as the video played. How's this possible? I was assured he cleared everything. Mara's eyes skimmed the article as well. The public had sympathy for Sabrina, and Martin was the villain. Dean and co. would suffer for this. Martin and Mara were about to lose a lot of money. Fury rose in Mara as she sat up. Sabrina was impossible to take down, but she still needed to pay for what she did to Mara. Martin matched her anger. His sister promised to watch his back, and now he was going down for her dirty work. Martin whirled on Mara. Where do we go from here? Peter was Mara's only hope. She reached for her phone. I'll try my contact again. If anyone can fix this, it's him. Mara hung up. The call went to voicemail. Mara sank back into her bed. Peter must still be angry with her. She shouldn't have sent him away that night. She should have kept her mouth shut and let him have his way with her. Martin's publicist was calling him, but he declined the call. Now HR was calling. Martin sighed and lifted the phone to his ear. (sighs) What? The HR manager was unfazed by Martin's shortness. Sir, five of your top managers have resigned, effective immediately. Martin froze. What do you mean they resigned? How could they just quit? During his time of greatest need? Martin needed his managers to handle the company while he dealt with this PR nightmare. The HR manager continued. I also resign, effective immediately, of course. Martin fumed but covered his anger. I'll pay you double. Work for me, convince the other managers to stay. I'll double their pay as well. The HR manager sighed. Martin must be desperate. He wasn't known for his generosity. (sighs) I'm sorry, Mr. Dean. I prefer my integrity to money. What you did to Miss Collins was despicable. And I can no longer work for you in good conscience. Martin went cold. Wait! The line died before Martin could get another word in. His whole world was crumbling around him. His company, his relationship with Sabrina, his good name. How could he come back from this? Mara noticed the defeated look on Martin's face. What is it? Martin sunk into a chair. Everyone quit.
Mara waved it off. We could find replacements. Martin looked up at Mara. I can't go to the office. I'm sure the press is swarming the place. And now none of my managers, including HR, are around to pick up the slack. How the hell are we supposed to find replacements? Mara shrunk back into her pillow. Martin had never been this angry with her before. She tried to pull herself together. Martin, I'm sorry. Martin glared at her. Your insatiable need for revenge cost us everything. Mara strengthened her resolve, sitting up taller. There's a way to fix this. I know it. Martin scoffed. <laughs> How, Mara? Show me. Do you even know where your hacker is? Do you know his address? Anything about how to track him down? Mara gritted her teeth. I will find him. I won't give up until I do. Mara pulled out her phone again and sent a text to Peter. I'm sorry, Peter. I miss you. Losing you has made me realize I think I'm in love with you. To Mara's shock, Peter's response came within seconds. You love the father of your child. He can clean up your messes from now on. Mara's nostrils flared. She'd given Peter everything he wanted. Her body. And now he was going to ditch her because his ego was wounded? Mara typed furiously. You failed to clean up the cameras like you promised. The pregnancy isn't real. I was testing you. Peter's text shocked Mara. I found the video you took. The one where you drugged Martin and had sex with him? Mara went cold. As for the cameras, I didn't lie to you. I cleared them. But there was another camera. Not through JC's IT department. I can't be blamed for that. Mara quickly typed back, Where are you? I need to see you. I want to explain. Please. Peter's final text read, Don't bother. By the time Mara typed another response, Peter had blocked her. She'd hit a dead end. Meanwhile, Sabrina woke up to a soft knock at her door. She looked around groggily. She usually woke up before it was light out, but the sun shone through the window. She checked her watch. It was already eight in the morning. She was startled by the time and sat up, but couldn't bring herself to get out of bed. She was exhausted. Sabrina fell back into her pillows. <sighs> Come in. A maid walked in with a tray of breakfast. Sabrina willed herself to sit up. I can get up. I'll eat with the family. The maid continued inside and set the tray beside Sabrina. Everyone's eaten already. Mr. Taylor is also waiting for you by the car. Sabrina propped up her pillows. Oh, thank you. The house was silent. Everyone had probably gone to work. No one worried about Sabrina in the mornings because Chris took care of her. When she wasn't at breakfast this morning, they probably assumed she was staying home to recover from her hospital visit. She turned to the maid. You can tell Chris to come inside and wait. The maid nodded and left. The door opened a moment later and Chris walked in. He looked at Sabrina, concerned. Are you all right? Sabrina yawned. I'm fine. Sorry. I slept in accidentally. Chris nodded. He couldn't imagine how tired she was. Being pregnant with twins was probably exhausting. Not to mention being drugged and having 70% of your company share stolen out from under you by an ex-boyfriend. Sabrina pulled herself out of bed and reached for her tray of food. Chris walked towards her. You should lie back down and relax. Sabrina continued to move. I should eat at the table. Sabrina and Chris walked down to the dining room. As they passed by the kitchen, the smell of bacon and eggs wafted their way. Sabrina's nose wrinkled and nausea hit her like a truck. She booked it towards the bathroom. She barely made it to the toilet in time to empty her stomach. Chris followed close behind her and grabbed her hair to pull it out of her face. Sabrina continued to throw up. Chris rubbed her back gently, wanting to comfort her however he could. Sabrina finally stopped and sat back, pale and shaking. She looked at Chris, realizing he had been taking care of her. She shifted uneasily. It had been a very long time since they'd been this close. During their marriage, the only time Chris had held her was when they tried to make a baby. He certainly never rubbed her back when she was sick, 
or showed any other sign of physical affection. Sabrina thought back to her conversation with Matilda. Her best friend claimed Chris had changed. Sabrina was convinced Chris only cared about her because she was pregnant with his children. But the way he touched her back just now... She shook her head, trying to clear her mind. She was nauseous because of her pregnancy. This was nothing more than Chris's concern for his kids. Chris's brows furrowed. Are you all right? He spoke softly. Sabrina had never heard him speak this way before. She looked up at him, concern in his eyes. Sabrina had never seen him look like that either. Something else hit her. A smell that quieted her stomach. Can I borrow your blazer? Chris raised an eyebrow but took off his blazer and handed it to her without a word. She appreciated that he didn't question the strange request as she pulled the jacket over her pajamas. Sabrina got up to wash her face and rinsed her mouth. Chris noticed Sabrina taking a deep breath whenever her head turned towards the shoulders of his blazer. He realized that the scent of his cologne settled her nausea. Chris smiled to himself and followed her out of the bathroom. For the first time in a long time, Sabrina didn't look annoyed by his presence. She turned to him and gave him a small smile. Give me a few minutes. I'm going to shower and get dressed. Chris nodded. Take your time. I'm not in a hurry. It wasn't entirely true. Chris was slammed at work, but Sabrina was his priority, and he would do whatever she needed. After her shower, Sabrina came back downstairs and sat down at the dining table with Chris to eat breakfast. Chris was saddened by the thought that he missed out on years' worth of meals with Sabrina while they were married because of his own stupidity. He stared at her, taking in how beautiful she was. Sabrina pushed a plate of bacon towards him. Have some, please. There's too much for me to eat alone. Chris smiled and took a piece of bacon. Sabrina examined him while he ate. This feeling was strange. Thinking back, this might be one of the first times they had ever shared a meal together. The drive to Sabrina's office was silent, but it was different from the silence of their other drives. There was an ease between them. Chris kept his mouth shut, wanting to savor this energy. He was afraid any conversation would ruin it. He pulled up to Sabrina's office and she went to take off Chris's blazer. Chris stopped her. You take the blazer for the day. Chris's heart swelled when he saw the relieved look on Sabrina's face. She wanted to keep the blazer but was too embarrassed to ask. Chris sensed this. Please ask for whatever you need. I'll get you anything you want. Sabrina smiled, but it was gone quickly. Chris's brows furrowed. Are you all right? Sabrina sighed and looked at Chris. I'm a little scared. Chris nodded. He knew she was talking about what happened with Martin. I'll get you extra security. Also, I don't think he'll bother you anytime soon after this. Chris pulled out his phone and showed her the news headlines of how Martin drugged her. She took a deep breath. She forgot Devin told her the video would be leaked this morning. Sabrina turned to Chris. Does this mean my dad doesn't have to repurchase the shares? And will Martin get arrested? Chris put a hand on Sabrina's shoulder. Your dad and Devin are doing everything they can. Don't worry about the money. Or Martin. Sabrina smiled. Thank you. Chris couldn't help but smile back. Is there anything else you need, Sabrina? Sabrina shook her head. No, that's it. I should get to work. Chris nodded. I'll see you this evening. She left and Chris pulled out his phone. He arranged for extra security and made another call to set up a little surprise for Sabrina. Sabrina tried to power through the day despite her exhaustion. It wasn't even halfway done when she started dreaming about going home to her bed and sleeping. Sabrina slumped. She didn't have the energy to deal with people right now. She hoped whatever this was, it would be quick. Come in. She turned to the open door, expecting to see her assistant. But Chris walked in with a large bouquet. He headed to where the older bouquet sat in a vase, picked up the old, nearly dead flowers, and tossed them. He filled the vase with the new bouquet. Sabrina looked at Chris incredulously as he took his time delicately arranging the flowers. When he was done, he approached Sabrina and handed her a small box. This is for you. Sabrina raised an eyebrow. It's not my birthday yet. Chris smiled. Good thing this isn't for your birthday then. Besides, you should be celebrated every day. Sabrina's breath caught as she looked at the package before her. 
Did this have to do with Martin? Or the twins? It felt like too much. Chris's comfort while she was sick, sharing breakfast, the flowers, now a present? Was this a sign that Chris did have feelings for her like Matilda claimed? What could the gift be? Sabrina looked curiously at the present Chris handed to her. What could it be? And what did it mean? She took the wrapped gift from Chris and carefully opened it. Cologne. His scent. The same scent that had quieted her nauseated stomach earlier that day. Sabrina smiled and gave it a small spritz. She closed her eyes as she inhaled. Everything within her calmed down, and she instantly felt lighter. Sabrina opened her eyes and turned to Chris. I love it, thank you. Chris smiled at her softly. There's more. I know you've been busy and probably exhausted with everything going on, so I brought Ariana along to help you out. She's sitting outside. Sabrina raised her eyebrows. Chris, don't you need her help? Chris shook his head. Today's been pretty light. He was lying, of course. Today was packed with meetings, but Sabrina needed the help more than he did. Sabrina smiled and nodded. If you're sure, Chris, Ariana's great. Chris turned to leave. I'll pick you up at the usual time. Sabrina stopped him. Wait. She took off his blazer. Now that she had the cologne, she didn't need it anymore. Thanks for letting me borrow it. Chris pushed the blazer back to her. You keep it, in case you feel cold and you can wear it over your dress. He smiled warmly at her again. Sabrina looked from him to the blazer. It was a comfortable blazer. It wouldn't hurt to have it for the day. Blushing, she put the blazer back on. Thanks. Chris moved to leave again, but turned back to Sabrina. Can I... hug you? Chris's face went warm with embarrassment. He felt silly for asking and instantly regretted it. Sorry, never mind. But to his surprise, Sabrina smiled at him and wrapped her arms around him. Chris stiffened from shock, but quickly settled into the hug and wrapped his arms around Sabrina. Butterflies filled his stomach. He'd never felt this way before. Excitement, warmth, joy, affection. How did he not take advantage of this while they were married? They had only shared a bed when they were trying to get pregnant. But there was no affection in the way they had sex. Chris kicked himself for being so emotionally unavailable back then. This hug was fixing something Chris hadn't even known was broken. He didn't want to let her go, but followed Sabrina when she pulled away. Chris gazed down at Sabrina, wondering why she seemed more relaxed around him. Maybe her father told her about Chris's involvement with Martin and the stolen shares in her company. But Jacob promised he wouldn't, and Chris trusted him. Chris loosed a breath and smiled at Sabrina. Thank you for the hug. Sabrina felt strange. Hugging her ex-husband shouldn't feel so foreign. But this hug was a first. It felt different. It felt good. Sabrina shook her head at these thoughts. It was the first time they were hugging as friends. That's the reason it felt different. Sabrina shrugged, smiling. <laughs> You've been a good friend. Chris ran a hand through his hair. I'm trying to be better. Not just because you're carrying our children, but because you, Sabrina Collins, deserve it. Chris seemed sincere that this wasn't about the baby. Babies. For the first time between Chris and Sabrina, this was about her. She couldn't help but feel special in a way she never did before. But could she trust it? She blushed a little. You're full of surprises, Chris. Sabrina wanted to turn around and head back to her desk. But something was keeping her planted. Something drew her to Chris. Chris didn't move either. I promise, this change is real. I'll work to get better and better every day. I hope one day you can look at me and be proud that I am the father of your children. Sabrina froze, trying to figure out what to say. As much as Sabrina wanted to believe those words, the Chris Taylor she knew was always looking for ways to benefit himself. And when it came to women, that usually meant sex. Sabrina spoke without thinking. When was the last time you were with a woman? The color drained from Chris's face. This isn't about you taking me back. 
I understand if you never do, and I'm not asking you to have sex with me. Chris hoped that Sabrina would understand. He valued her, not for the sex, not even for the two children growing in her belly. This was about her. Sabrina thought about the doctor's recommendation to get more exercise. You've asked me for sex before. Chris took her by the shoulder and looked her in the eyes, mustering every bit of earnestness he could. I miss you. I miss everything about you. Yes, including the sex. But this isn't about that. Please believe me. Sabrina's heart leaped, but she quickly stifled the feeling. This was everything she wanted in their marriage. What made Chris change so much now that they were divorced? Sabrina looked up at him. You haven't answered my question. Chris sighed. He was embarrassed and disgusted with himself. About all the times he slept around looking for something that was already waiting for him at home. He avoided her gaze. The last time I had sex was two weeks after our divorce. But I had a hard time. Sabrina raised an eyebrow. What do you mean, Chris? Chris was a notorious womanizer. The idea of him having a difficult time with sex seemed a little far-fetched. Even when he and Sabrina had slept together, devoid of any love or intimacy, Chris had no trouble at all. Chris winced, wanting nothing more than to run out of the room, but he forced himself to tell Sabrina the truth. Ever since we ended things, I just never knew how much I loved you until our marriage ended. Nothing felt right with any other woman. I'm so sorry, Sabrina. I should have fought for us. Sabrina frowned, looking down at the floor. I think I need to be alone for a while, Chris. Chris's face fell, but he nodded. I know. Like I said, this isn't about getting you back. Are you upset with me? Sabrina shook her head. No. Sabrina jumped. She'd almost forgotten they were still in the office. Come in. Ariana poked her head in. Good morning, Mrs. Taylor. Sabrina cut her off. It's Miss Collins. Ariana shook her head apologetically. Old habits. I'm so sorry. Ariana turned to Chris. Mr. Taylor, Rita says the board members are waiting for you at the office. Chris's heart sank. He didn't want to end this conversation with Sabrina, but he nodded to his assistant. Tell them I'm on my way. Ariana pulled out her phone and disappeared into the hallway. Chris turned back to Sabrina, but Sabrina spoke first. I'll see you this evening, Chris. Chris realized that she wasn't dismissing him. There was a warmth to her voice like she was looking forward to seeing him later that day. Also, was she blushing? Chris flashed a smile at her before he turned and left the office. Sabrina waited a moment until she knew Chris was gone before she pressed the button on her intercom. Ariana, can you come in here for a moment? Seconds later, Ariana entered. What can I help you with, Miss Collins? Sabrina motioned for Ariana to sit. You've worked with Mr. Taylor for quite a while, haven't you? Ariana nodded. Sabrina smiled and leaned in. Can you be honest with me, woman to woman? Anxiety filled Ariana. It wasn't her place to spill secrets about her boss. Sabrina didn't wait for a response. What's Chris's recent history? With women. Ariana froze. She didn't want to get in trouble with Chris. As though sensing her anxiety, Sabrina spoke softly. This won't get back to him. This is girl talk. It's a safe space, I promise. Ariana softened a little. Well, you were married to him, so you know he's had his fair share of partners. Sabrina nodded. Yes, but more recently. Has he been to the club, or... Ariana shook her head. He hasn't been to the club recently. At least, not that I know of. Sabrina chewed her lower lip, thinking. Chris and Danny used to go to the club almost every night. Someone like Ariana, who had access to Chris's bank statements and calendar, would know if Chris was still living that lifestyle. Sabrina cocked her head. And other partners? As far as I know, he hasn't had other partners. He works all day, and unless he's dropping you off or picking you up, he's at the office. He sleeps in the bedroom there. Sabrina's eyebrows raised. 
He has a bedroom in his office? Ariana nodded. I haven't seen any women come and go like they used to. He even redecorated the room recently. Sabrina made a mental note to investigate that room when she got a chance. Ariana leaned forward. It's been quite the transformation, honestly. Mr. Taylor seems different lately. Like something's changed inside of him. Sabrina nodded. So she wasn't the only one who sensed it. Thank you for being honest with me. Sabrina's mind wandered to the last subject that tugged at her. What about Brenda? Ariana winced. Their relationship is... tense. Miss Thompson has been pretty shameless. Announcing their engagement when Mr. Taylor hasn't proposed, asking him for money and favors. She's visited the office unannounced more times than I can count. The last time, Chris called security on her. Sabrina usually wasn't one for gossip, but her curiosity egged her on. Really? Where's Brenda now? Ariana chuckled. <laughs> no idea. She and Chris hardly talk nowadays. He also made me cancel the cooks and maid service for their penthouse. Her driver also overheard that Chris put a strict spending limit on her too. A hundred dollars a day. Sabrina frowned. I feel a little sorry for her. She is pregnant after all. Ariana nodded understandingly. Don't feel too bad. I think the money thing was a response to Brenda withdrawing half a million dollars from his account at one point. Sabrina went slack-jawed at the audacity of withdrawing half a million dollars from someone else's account. Sabrina sighed and rubbed her temples. How did Brenda take it? When he imposed the spending limit. Ariana rolled her eyes. She was not happy. She went to the bank to take out even more money, and when the tellers told her she couldn't, she fainted. Chris told her he's trying to save up for the baby. Sabrina couldn't help but laugh at that. Chris was worth billions. He had no reason to save. Sabrina folded her hands on her desk. One more question, Ariana. Why do you think he's treating her like this? Ariana cocked her head to the side. That I don't know. I was surprised, too. If she's truly carrying his baby... But Danny probably knows why. Chris tells him everything. Sabrina nodded. Thank you again. I really appreciate this. And for helping me out. I want to pay you for your work today, so send me an invoice when you're done, okay? Ariana waved a hand dismissively. No need, Miss Collins. Mr. Taylor pays me really well. I've been the breadwinner in my family ever since I started with him. Even when my husband lost his job, my salary was enough to get us through. Sabrina smiled. It was nice to know Chris treated his employees well. Sabrina raised an eyebrow. You're a beautiful woman, Ariana. Chris never hit on you? Ariana blushed. Was the reason Chris didn't need to bring women back to the office because Ariana fulfilled his needs? Why hadn't Sabrina thought of this before? And was Ariana about to reveal that she was the other woman? Sabrina kept her gaze steady on Ariana. Sorry to pry like this. It's just that you're gorgeous. I wouldn't be surprised if Chris made a move on you. Sabrina's throat caught. Could the reason Chris was no longer sleeping around with women be because he was secretly in love with Ariana? Ariana was a beautiful woman who spent her days right outside Chris's office door, so it would make sense that Chris would be attracted to her. Ariana chuckled, but shook her head. <laughs> Chris doesn't hit on married women. I have noticed he draws a line there. Besides, I'm five months pregnant. Sabrina raised an eyebrow. I had no idea. You're not showing at all. Ariana stood up and ran her hand across her belly, flattening her flowing dress. Sure enough, she had a small bump, but still, she didn't look five months pregnant. Ariana smiled and sat back down. I've been strategically planning my outfits. I don't want anyone at the office to know just yet. Sabrina frowned. Wait, Chris doesn't know? Ariana winced. No, not yet. Sabrina gave her a warm smile. You should tell him. Ariana sighed. Oh, I'm anxious. 
You know how it is being a woman in this industry? I'm afraid I'll get moved to a different department or get a pay decrease. I've heard horror stories of pregnant women getting demoted. After I have the baby, I'm just going to take leave. Sabrina cut her off. If Chris has truly changed, he wouldn't do that. Besides, you can't be discriminated against for being pregnant. I'll make sure of that as well. I think it's better not to surprise Chris when you're farther along and just let him know now. Ariana smiled and nodded. You're right. I'll let him know when I get to the office tomorrow and call HR. Thank you, Miss Collins. Ariana checked her watch and stood up. I should get back to work. I'm just outside if you need me. Sabrina's mind wandered back to Chris as Ariana left. She couldn't help but think about what would happen when Ariana took her maternity leave. There would be another assistant, possibly one that was unmarried and just as gorgeous. Sabrina shook her head. Why was she so stuck on the thought of Chris with other women? They were divorced. She shouldn't care about what he got up to and Chris was free to date or sleep with whoever he wanted to. It shouldn't bother her, right? Across town, Chris sat in a meeting with his board members and got a text from his temporary assistant, Rita, that Devin was waiting for him outside his office. Devin would only visit if it were important. Anxious to finish the meeting quickly, he rushed through the rest of it and dismissed himself from idling and chatting afterward. Chris headed straight to his office, relieved to see Devin was still seated in the waiting area. Rita occupied Ariana's desk, looking apologetic. She wasn't sure if it was okay to let Devin wait, but Chris gave her a look, suggesting she wasn't in trouble. Rita relaxed. Chris knew Devin must be there because of Sabrina or Martin, so he was glad Rita didn't send him away. He was eager to know what Devin had to say, so Chris gestured toward the door. Come into my office, Devin. Chris retreated inside and Devin followed. Chris sat behind his desk and motioned for Devin to sit down as well. Devin felt a pang of guilt. Chris was being so polite to him, even after everything. He was ashamed of how he'd acted towards Chris before everything that went down with Martin. Devin cleared his throat. <sighs> Did you get a new assistant? I don't recognize her. Chris chuckled. I sent Ariana to help Sabrina for the day. She was feeling overwhelmed and anxious after everything that happened with Martin. So I said I'd help her out. Rita's covering for me. Devin nodded. It was nice of Chris to give Sabrina the extra help. Maybe everyone was right that Chris had changed for the better. Chris smirked. I'd be lying if I said she wasn't there to spy for me a bit too. I want to be the first to know if something happens. Especially if Martin or one of his cronies decides to show his face. Devin winced at the mention of Martin's name. Thank you for looking after my sister. I understand why she'd be scared. I imagine there might be some retaliation after the video was leaked. On top of that, Martin can't be happy that I tore his copy of the signed contract when I confronted him. Chris laughed at Devin's boldness. And you destroyed Martin's copy? Devin nodded. What do you think we should do? Should we press charges? Take him to court? Chris shrugged. If you destroyed the evidence, that might not be necessary. Devin sighed. Ah, Sabrina still has her copy. Chris leaned back in his chair. You could destroy Sabrina's copy so Martin doesn't try to get a hold of it. Even if he's in hiding right now, I wouldn't put it past him to hire someone to steal it from our office. If we press charges, Martin might go to jail for a few months. Maybe a couple of years. Devin's ears perked. We should do that. How do we press charges? Chris waved it off. If we do, it's going to be a whole legal battle. Court appearances, litigation costs. I don't want to burden Sabrina with that right now. I think Martin deserves a bigger punishment than a few months in jail. Devin raised an eyebrow. What are you suggesting? Chris's expression darkened. I want to destroy Martin and everything he cares about. I want him to suffer. Devin leaned forward. How do you intend to do that? Devin liked the idea of making his ex-best friend pay, and he agreed with Chris. A couple of months in jail was too light a sentence. But Devin still wasn't quite sure what Chris meant. 
Chris crossed his arms and went over all the possibilities in his mind. Suddenly, he pulled out his phone. Give me a minute, Devin. I need to make a call. General Saint picked up immediately. Chris, what can I do for you? Devin raised an eyebrow at the sound of his fiancé's father's voice. Chris spoke into the phone. I know you're a busy man. I don't want to take too much of your time, but there are some people on my radar that I need your help dispatching. We could go the legal route, but they deserve a little more than that. I want to see that they can no longer hurt anyone again. Devin stiffened. Chris wanted to kill them? Devin was surprised, given Brenda's pregnancy. But maybe Chris knew more than he was telling Devin. His interest was piqued, so he didn't interject. The line went silent for a moment before the general spoke again. I see. Who do you have in mind, exactly? And I want to remind you that I would advise against this and to operate within the law. Chris frowned a little. Brenda and Kurt Thompson. Devin heard a grunt of recognition from the general. Chris looked up at Devin. Also, Martin Dean and his sister, Mara. Guilt ripped through Devin. Did everyone but him know Mara was still alive? The general had a particular interest in Mara. She was the reason Matilda was framed for a crime she didn't commit. The sound of Mara's name made Chris's suggestion enticing. Do you have Mara's location? Chris went cold. No, we still haven't been able to locate her. It's been a little difficult tracking her down. We have eyes on Martin, but she hasn't shown her face yet. Devin had a million questions he wanted to ask, but he stayed silent, ignoring every impulse to speak. He let the general and Chris continue their conversation. The general spoke with authority. I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to see Mara pay for what she did to Matilda, in the same way you want her to pay. Chris smirked, but the general continued. If we do this, it has to be in secret. No one is above the law, not even me, Chris frowned. If I wanted this to be done in secret, I wouldn't need your help. I want to expose them, have them admit to what they've done. Then I want the world to know before getting rid of them. Devin squirmed a little. He felt the same way, though he was uncomfortable admitting it. Martin's betrayal was the worst thing Devin had ever experienced. He couldn't believe that he trusted someone like that, and he wanted Martin to pay for his deception and lies. The general cleared his throat and lowered his voice. <clears throat> we could do both. It would be better to expose them, then go the legal route. We can consider our options once they've been released. Chris nodded. A double punishment... I don't hate that idea. Fine. Let's do it. We'll have Martin arrested, then we can see what leverage we have and use that against him to reveal Mara's location. The general chuckled. <laughs> if I'd known Mara had a brother, I would have already dealt with him. Chris sighed. Believe me, I wanted to do the same. But Sabrina trusted him and would never have listened to me if I had said anything. If I touched him, Sabrina would have hated me forever. The general's voice softened. He suspected Chris was fighting to win Sabrina back and would have done the same in his shoes. I don't blame you there, son. I'll see you at Sabrina's party. My people will be in touch. Chris spoke up before the general could end the call, but he had one last question. Will you be bringing some men with you? The general paused for a moment. Will four be enough? Chris smiled, giving Devin a wink. I think we can work with that, sir. The general hung up and Chris turned his attention to Devin. Do you have anything that could help us? He was your best friend, after all. Devin looked guilty. I... I don't even know where he lives. Chris raised an eyebrow. How could Devin not know where his best friend lived? Danny and Chris told each other everything. Chris sighed. Were you even best friends? Devin's face flushed with embarrassment. We were both swamped running our businesses. 
We only really met for lunch or drinks every once in a while. Chris huffed. The only reason he and Danny weren't spending as much time together lately was because they were focused on Lizzie and Sabrina. But even then, Chris and Danny were in constant communication. Chris looked at Devin seriously. Exactly how long have you known Martin? Devin rolled his eyes, wanting to move on from the subject. Chris, can you find his address? You have the resources. Chris paused for a moment, considering how much he wanted to tell Devin. Chris finally spoke. I know where he lives, but we'll send the cops to his office instead. Devin frowned. He won't be there. After everything with the video and the press, he'll be avoiding that place like the plague. But surely Chris already knew that. Devin would never admit it out loud, but he knew Chris was smart enough to have already figured that out. Did Chris have something else up his sleeve? Devin racked his brain. Why would Chris want to send police to Martin's office when he knew Martin would avoid going to work now that the world saw the video of him drugging Sabrina? Devin raised an eyebrow. What do you have planned, Chris? Chris smiled. I know he won't be there. He'd be a fool if he showed his face. But sending the cops to his office would cause panic among the staff. If people don't have faith in him anymore, they will resign. And if he can't resolve his issues and hire replacements, the company won't survive. Devin nodded, catching on. He needs to come out of hiding to save his company. But if he does, he'll be arrested. He's between a rock and a hard place, Chris smirked. Exactly. Devin's focus shifted back to Mara. He couldn't believe his former best friend had kept that big a secret all this time. Devin cocked his head. Where are you at with Mara, Chris? Chris examined Devin. Devin spoke confidently, but last Chris heard, Devin didn't believe Matilda when she told him that Mara was alive. Chris wanted more information before speaking. What do you know? Devin's head sank, ashamed. Matilda told me everything. I know you helped her, that you cleared her name. Thank you for doing that. I should have been the one to help her. I should have believed her. Devin's expression went dark. And I want to kill Mara myself. This was an unexpected turn. Matilda seemed so scared to broach the subject of Mara with Devin. But after everything that just happened, it seemed that Devin was ready to be more open-minded when it came to the Dean family. Chris raised his eyebrows in surprise. So, you came to your senses. I'll help you get your revenge on Mara. I want her to pay for what she's done as well. But I need two favors. Devin nodded. Anything. Devin almost regretted agreeing to do Chris a favor so quickly. Making deals with Chris Taylor usually didn't end well. But if everyone was telling the truth, Chris had changed and working with him would be worth it. Chris grinned, looking satisfied. I need to learn how to cook. Specifically, Sabrina's favorite dishes. Chris took a gamble with this request. He didn't even know if Devin knew his way around a kitchen. But since Sabrina was such a good cook, it wasn't a stretch to think her brother might be as well. Devin frowned with confusion. Why? Chris shrugged, looking sheepish. I want to surprise her. I asked Danny for help as well. He knows the basics, but I need more help. Devin laughed. Whenever Chris spoke about Sabrina, he looked like a lovesick teenager. <laughs> Don't you have cooks that could help teach you? Chris sighed. <sighs> You're Sabrina's brother. You probably know what she likes better than anyone. And what she might be craving during the pregnancy. Devin thought about the dishes their late mother used to cook for them. They were Sabrina's favorites, and Chris was smart to ask Devin if he wanted to impress Sabrina. Chris blushed slightly. Also, the hired cooks are a bit intimidating. I want to have some knowledge before asking them to teach me. I don't want them to laugh at me. Devin chuckled. <laughs> Sorry for laughing. I know you just said. Before Devin completed, Chris laughed too. <laughs> it's okay. It's different with you. I consider you family. Devin nodded. He wanted his sister to be happy. 
Okay, I'll teach you to cook. What's the second favor? Chris hesitated, a little unsure of himself. I need you to escort Sabrina to her birthday party. Devin raised an eyebrow, confused. Don't you want to be the one to do it? It's your party, after all. Chris sighed. I have to make sure Brenda and her father get there. Devin frowned. Why? Chris had to have something up his sleeve. After what Devin learned the last couple of days, Devin found it strange that Chris would want Brenda at Sabrina's birthday party. Chris opened his mouth to speak, but closed it. Devin sighed. Chris, I'm on your side. A promise. I already know about the diamonds. Chris's eyes widened. Did you tell Sabrina? Devin shook his head. No, and I'm not going to. My father told me you wanted to be the one to let her know. I respect that. Chris stiffened but relaxed quickly. If Jacob filled Devin in on this, it meant that Jacob trusted Devin, and Chris trusted Jacob. Chris decided to tell Devin the whole truth. Brenda knew about the diamonds, and that's why she was fighting so hard to get the mansion. She was looking for where my father hid them. So I commissioned fake diamonds. I wanted to throw Brenda and her father off the scent of the real ones. I don't know who else they told about the diamonds. If they believe the gems are fake, everyone they've ever told will believe it too. Devin loosed a heavy sigh. <laughs> That's brilliant. Speaking of Brenda, is her child yours? Chris scoffed. It usually went against every instinct to tell Devin the truth, but now that Devin was finally out from under Martin's grasp, it felt like Devin should know. I think the question isn't about whether or not the child is mine, but rather, is Brenda even pregnant? Chris smirked. The answer to that is no, by the way. She's not pregnant. Devin let out a low whistle. Whew. Wow. Devin felt lighter. Brenda was always a burden for Sabrina. Knowing they didn't share a baby daddy was a big relief, but his thoughts floated back to Mara. Devin leaned back in his chair. So, Mara. I know she's alive now, but what proof do we have? Chris rubbed his brow. I believe she's living with Martin, but his place is a fortress. Danny was able to get one spy hired as a maid there. But she hasn't seen Mara, or any other woman living there for that matter. I don't know if she's been paid to keep quiet or if she truly doesn't know. Devin's brow furrowed. How can that be? She's like a ghost. Chris huffed. She's a demon. She clearly had the resources to hide all these years. It brings to question what else she's capable of. But we did learn that she uses several aliases and has a powerful hacker on her team. Danny's still working to track him down. Devin nodded, sighing. Speaking of Danny, is he serious about Lizzie? Chris shrugged. Danny always seems happy after their dates, but you'll have to ask him. Devin crossed his arms. I want to know what you think. Chris laughed. <laughs> It's a biased opinion. He's my best friend. I'm, of course, going to say that Danny is a great guy, and Lizzie is lucky to have him. Devin relaxed. I just want to make sure Danny doesn't hurt my sister. The same goes for you and Sabrina. Chris nodded and gave Devin a serious look. I learned my lesson. I'd never hurt Sabrina again. Devin looked satisfied and got up to leave. I'm off to look into ways to get Martin arrested. When the day ended, Chris went to pick Sabrina up. As he approached her office, he noticed Ariana was still there. They nodded in acknowledgement to each other. He was glad she was working hard for Sabrina and made a mental note to give her a bonus when this was all over. Ariana was a hard worker and one of the best employees he had on his payroll. On top of that, Chris trusted her, which was a rare thing in his line of work. There weren't many people he'd send to watch over Sabrina for the day, but Ariana was one of them. Chris was ashamed when he remembered that he had hit on Ariana back when she first started working for him. Ariana shut him down quickly and told Chris she was married. Chris drew the line at married women. 
but he still felt uncomfortable thinking about that day. He was glad it didn't go any farther than him coming on to her. Chris entered Sabrina's office, but she was on the phone. She acknowledged his presence and gestured for him to wait in the lobby while she finished the call. So Chris slipped out again. Chris returned to Ariana's desk and noticed she was packing up for the day. Ariana, what are you doing? Sabrina hasn't left yet. Ariana cringed a bit. She just messaged me and said I could go since you were here. I have a date with my husband. Chris hesitated. He was used to Ariana listening to his orders. And his orders today were for her to watch over Sabrina, which meant staying until Sabrina did. But Ariana technically didn't work for him today, so who was he to tell her what to do? Ariana looked guilty, unsure of what Chris was thinking. I'm sorry, Mr. Taylor. I can stay. Chris softened. Now that he was here, he could take over watching Sabrina, and Ariana wasn't needed anymore anyway. He shook his head. No, it's okay. But I drove you over. Your car is still at my office. Ariana cut in. My husband picked up the car and is on his way to get me. He should be here any minute. Chris nodded. All right. Enjoy your evening. Ariana smiled, relieved, calling over her shoulder as she hurried off. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Have a good night. Sabrina's voice sounded over the speaker. Chris, you can come back in. Chris entered Sabrina's office again and she looked up apologetically. Sorry, I'll be done soon. Chris waved off her worry. It's all right. He sat down and watched her sitting behind the desk, admiring the way she worked and the expression she made when she was thinking. After a while, Sabrina glanced up. I just remembered I won't be in the office tomorrow. I'm taking the day off so you don't have to take me to work. Chris's brow furrowed. Why? Are you all right? If it had to do with Sabrina's health or the babies, Chris wanted to make sure he was there to take care of her. Sabrina smiled, easing Chris's worry. Yes, everything's fine. Since it's my birthday the day after tomorrow, Lizzie and Matilda want to take me out for a girl's day. I'm going to get my hair done, pick out a dress, and go to the spa. Lizzie and Matilda are taking the day off, too. Chris relaxed, relieved it wasn't a medical issue or something troubling. Seeing Sabrina in a good mood, Chris steeled himself to say what he was about to reveal to Sabrina. Maybe now was the best time to rip the band-aid off. He cleared his throat. <clears throat> a girl's day sounds great, Sabrina. Speaking of your birthday, I have something important to run by you. Chris started to sweat. How could he find the words to tell Sabrina what he knew she wouldn't want to hear? As he chewed his lower lip, Sabrina could tell Chris was about to drop a bomb. What did he have to tell her about her birthday? And why did she get the feeling that this was about to break her heart? Chris dropped his gaze to the floor, sighing heavily. It was now or never. <sighs> Sabrina, I invited Brenda to your birthday party. I hope that's okay. He braced himself, ready for Sabrina to scream or cry. Instead, she just stared at him. Sabrina lifted a brow. What did you just say? She ignored the urge to rub her ears. Chris didn't just tell her he was bringing a date to her birthday party, did he? And not just some random woman either. The same woman who he cheated on her with just before their marriage ended. Chris flinched. I said Brenda will be at the party. I hope you don't mind. Sabrina's voice squeaked. You hope I don't mind? It's a little late for that, isn't it? She shook her head. It's not like I can tell you to call the whole thing off now. Not when the invitations have been sent and so many of our business partners were invited. Chris cautiously inched closer to her desk. Sabrina. Sabrina waved a hand to cut him off. No, I get it. You paid for everything, so I don't get a say. Besides, she's carrying your child. Chris shifted from one foot to the other. He'd suspected Sabrina wouldn't be pleased to learn Brenda was coming. That's why he decided to tell her now rather than risk upsetting her at the party. But seeing how upset she was now made his chest ache. If only he could explain. But he couldn't tell Sabrina how he was planning to ruin Brenda. Sabrina was too kind. He had no doubt she'd try to talk him out of it. He sighed. Sabrina, I have a surprise for you on your birthday. And I promise I haven't been seeing Brenda. Not for a long time now. Sabrina shot him a sideways glare. Chris could give her all the presents in the world, 
but that couldn't make up for all the pain he'd caused her. She knew as much when she divorced him. And who else did she have to thank? Brenda. Brenda had a knack for worming her way into Chris's life. She convinced him to sleep with her and got pregnant. Brenda was even there on the day Sabrina tried to confess her feelings to Chris before his surgery. And now this, too? Sabrina crossed her arms. So, I'm just supposed to trust you? Chris smiled gently. I just wanted to tell you now so you weren't blindsided at the party. Brenda has a lot of things she needs to tell you. Sabrina scoffed. What could Brenda possibly have to tell her after betraying her by stealing her husband? Sabrina should have been more careful back when Brenda was just a friend. Then all this wouldn't have happened. Sabrina clenched her jaw. I'd really prefer if she didn't come. If Brenda has something to say to me, she can say it anytime. Why does she have to come to my party? Chris inhaled and exhaled slowly before replying carefully. I get that, and I'm not going to force you to say yes if you really don't want her there. But the truth is, there's something I need to say to you too, and I need Brenda there to hear it. Sabrina fumed. What's with the secrets? It was almost as bad as when Chris hit on her and tried to blame his actions on her needing sex because she was pregnant. Tell me right here and now. I don't want to wait until the party. Chris curved a hand through his hair. It was a good thing he hadn't told her he would be the one bringing Brenda to the party. Sabrina was mad enough just learning Brenda would be there. I know you don't trust me, but just this once, can you try? Sabrina pursed her lips and narrowed her eyes. Chris rushed to add, I promise if the surprise I have for you doesn't make Brenda's presence worth it, I'll leave you alone for good. I'll give you all the freedom you've wanted and never bother you again. Sabrina's face fell. Chris blinked. He'd been expecting that offer to earn a smile. Why did she look so... disappointed? An icy chill spread through Sabrina's chest. It was strange, and she wasn't entirely sure how it happened, but she'd gotten used to having Chris around. Every morning and evening, he came to see her without fail. But just because she'd begun to appreciate Chris's friendship didn't mean Sabrina had to deal with Brenda, too. Sabrina cocked a brow. Is it because she's carrying your child, too? Her stomach churned. What if he wanted their babies to be friends? He doesn't expect me to schedule playdates with Brenda, does he? Chris smiled. You're having twins with me, Sabrina. This is a one-time request. If you allow Brenda to attend your birthday party, I promise I'll never have anything to do with her again. Sabrina's brow furrowed. Chris, what are you talking about? You can't cut ties with Brenda. What will happen to her baby? That's your child too. Unless there was something Chris wasn't telling her. Chris chuckled. <laughs> I promise you'll get all the answers at the party. Please, just give me a chance to show you. I won't let you down. I only want you to be happy, Sabrina, I swear. Sabrina bit her lip as she considered Chris's words. Finally, her curiosity got the better of her. Okay, you can bring her. Chris had the urge to wrap his arms around Sabrina, but he settled for smiling broadly instead. Thank you. He wasn't taking the chance of making Sabrina upset again. He had to be patient and not demand hugs from her every chance he got. Sabrina let the matter rest and returned to her work. After about 30 minutes, she finished, and they left the office. When they arrived at Jacob's place, everyone was waiting. Despite the late hour, the Collins family gathered around the dining table and sat down to share a meal. Devin and Matilda sat on one side of the big table, with Jacob and Lizzie at the heads. Sabrina and Chris took seats on the opposite side. Devin cleared his throat. <sighs> Dad... The cops went to Martin's office to arrest him today, but he wasn't there. Jacob scoffed and took a big gulp of water. <sighs> I can't say I'm surprised the snake tried to flee. His face turned grim. Still, he can't hide forever with his company at stake. He needs to face the music and pay for what he did to your sister. Devin glanced at Chris. The police are going to Martin's estate tomorrow. Chris caught the hint and pulled out his phone. He texted directions to Martin's mansion to Devin. Devin smiled when he looked at his phone and sighed with relief. Sabrina grabbed a roll out of a basket and buttered it. We even have more on the waiting list. 
Chris smiled but kept his thoughts to himself. He was glad the work he'd done behind the scenes was helping Sabrina's company. She deserved it. Still, he understood why she wasn't in a rush to add more investors. Jacob lifted his wine glass. That's good news. He sipped from his cup before adding, Sabrina, I hope going to court won't be too hard on you. Devin cut in. Dad, the lawyers would do most of the talking. She wouldn't have to say much because the video shows everything. Besides, she doesn't even remember. Sabrina fiddled with her napkin. Don't worry, I'll be fine. Still, she was glad the lawyers would be at the forefront. If the court case ended up being broadcast, which was likely, then she'd end up on TV, too. She'd never liked the limelight. Jacob reached across the table and patted Sabrina's hand. You're right, honey. Let's eat. For a while, they ate in a comfortable silence until Devin spoke up. So, Dad, what about all the money you pumped into the company? Technically, Martin doesn't have the shares, so isn't the company too rich now? Are you going to withdraw and hide it in the trust fund like before? Jacob cleared his throat and turned to Chris. <sighs> Chris, you've been very quiet. You are part of this family in a sense, so what do you suggest I do? I used all the money in our trust fund to invest in the business again. Do you think I should return it? Chris patted his mouth with a napkin. Investing in the business is not a loss and will still generate income, so my suggestion is to leave it there. Yeah, it was Chris's money, but Sabrina deserved to keep it. He still felt like she was his wife in his heart. That meant what was his also belonged to her. Jacob glanced at Devin and then Chris before nodding. That's a good suggestion. I'll consider it carefully before making my final decision. Matilda hid a smile behind her cup. She hadn't missed all the glances the men exchanged. No doubt Chris was behind that money somehow. But she bit her tongue, even though she wished Sabrina would realize how much Chris was contributing to help her. Lizzie dropped her fork. Oh, before I forget, Devin, you promised to give me the day off tomorrow. Are you planning to drive out with the cops to Martin's house? Devin smiled and shook his head. Don't worry, baby sis. I'm just going to give them the location. I don't have to follow them. Lizzie smiled. Good. I have plans. When they finished dinner, Chris turned to Sabrina. Would you join me for a walk, Sabrina? Sabrina leaned back in her chair and patted her stuffed belly. Matilda and Lizzie are here to hang out before girls' day. You must be tired anyway, Chris. Chris's brow furrowed. Matilda and Lizzie didn't knock you up. Come on, stand up, and let's go. Seeing the annoyed look on Sabrina's face, he softened his voice and added, Please? Chris stood and held out a hand to help Sabrina out of her chair. Devin and Jacob smirked. Sabrina rolled her eyes and got up on her own, ignoring Chris's hand. Jacob waved as they left the room. Have a nice walk. Sabrina wore a frown at first, but once she was outside and the cool breeze blew through her hair, she sighed. A tiny smile crossed her face. <laughs> you know what? I'm glad you made me walk after all. My stomach is already feeling a little less bloated. Chris grinned. Good. I'm glad too. As they walked through the quiet neighborhood with only the streetlights for company, Chris took a risk. Before he could talk himself out of it, he reached out and grabbed Sabrina's hand. Sabrina tensed. Why was Chris holding her hand? And why did Sabrina like it so much? Sabrina stared down at her hand, with her ex-husband's fingers wrapped around it. What was Chris thinking? He'd never tried holding her hand on their walks before. She wasn't sure what to do. But in the end, she had to admit... It felt nice to share such a simple comfort with a friend. Sabrina tightened her grip on Chris's hand and continued on their peaceful nighttime stroll. Chris sighed. Beyond please, Sabrina didn't pull away. He relished the feel of her small hand in his while they walked the quiet streets. When they arrived back at the mansion, Sabrina tugged her hand free. Good night, Chris. She darted up the steps and threw open the door without waiting for a reply. Her heart pounded in her chest and she leaned back on the door after it closed. Chris stared at the mansion for a moment before shoving his hands in his pockets and walking to his car. He whistled to himself, 
already looking forward to seeing Sabrina again tomorrow. Chris drove away from the house, his stomach churning as he remembered what he had to do next. He'd been avoiding Brenda for ages, but now it was time to get her to the party. Chris pulled up to the penthouse. Had it really been three weeks since he last visited? He nodded to the security guard on duty. How's it going? The guard nodded back. All's well, sir. Chris strolled to the door and tried the handle. Locked. Chris rested his ear on the door and raised his voice. Brenda? You home? She didn't answer, but he heard music playing inside. He'd been receiving regular updates on Brenda's comings and goings from his driver. He knew Brenda was in there. According to the driver, she hadn't gone out in two days or even placed any takeout orders. Finally, footsteps tapped toward him. Brenda threw open the door. Chris? Hi, baby. I'm so happy to see you. Chris's brow furrowed when he got a look at her outfit. She wore a tank top and tiny shorts. Sweat glistened on her exposed belly. He had a feeling he'd just interrupted her workout. Brenda raced up the stairs, calling over her shoulder. Just give me a minute to get dressed. Her hands shook as she dressed, making sure to put on the fake baby bump, too. She only hoped she'd been quick enough racing into her room that he didn't notice her flat belly when she opened the door. Chris bit his tongue. Even though he'd have to be blind not to notice how slim Brenda still was. But for sake of his plan, he let Brenda think he'd been too distracted to notice. Chris found the remote for the music in the living room. He picked it up and silenced it. He ran his gaze over the penthouse, surprised to find it clean and tidy. Then again, she had to know he'd be upset if he returned and the place was a pigsty. Brenda called out from her room, her voice bubbling with happiness. I'm almost dressed! Make yourself comfortable! Chris barely resisted throwing the remote through the colossal TV hanging on the wall. Brenda didn't deserve to be so happy. Not after everything she'd done. Her evil plot to steal Sabrina's diamonds made him lose his wife. Brenda deserved to suffer for all the pain and loneliness she'd caused him. Brenda descended the stairs, carefully scanning Chris's blank face. Sorry, Chris, I had to change. Unease spread through her chest that she fought to hide. Chris set down the remote and it clattered loudly on the end table. You didn't know who was at the door and yet you opened it looking like that? You were practically naked. Or were you planning to give the security guy and driver a show? Brenda rolled her eyes. Oh, relax. I would have gotten changed just like I did when you showed up. She waved a hand. It's not like they don't see worse on a day at the beach. Chris leaned against the couch. Why did you rush to get changed? I would have thought you'd be dying to see me after we've been apart for so long. Unless you're keeping yourself entertained with someone else. Brenda didn't like the way he was accusing her of flirting with the help. That's not it at all. We just haven't slept together in so long. I felt weird talking to you while I was all sweaty and you looked so handsome. Chris shook himself, resisting the urge to argue further. He had to remember why he came here. He had to get Brenda to the party. Chris forced a smile. Pass the baby. Brenda beamed. Good? She kept up the act of being happy while inside her mind raced. Brenda needed the money Chris had promised her so she could leave. She'd just about given up on trying to get Chris to marry her. Sabrina was right. He'd always be the man who ignored the woman in his house in favor of another. Chris was all about the chase. Chris crossed his arms. How about the antenatal report? Brenda pouted. I... I haven't gone because you said that we should always go together. But you never answered your phone when I called. I called you multiple times, Chris. Chris sat there stone-faced, giving away nothing. Fine. Let's go tomorrow, then. Brenda blinked, then stared at the floor. Please, can we go when I get back from visiting my mom in Florida? She's better, but disappointed that I didn't visit her. I just miss her so much. Chris crossed his arms. Why don't you invite her here instead? His grandmother insisted that Brenda's mother was a good woman. Maybe she wasn't aware of what her husband and daughter were up to. Brenda fiddled with the hem of her dress. Oh, I don't know if we should move mom so soon after she recovered. Besides, she said she likes the weather there. 
Plus, my father misses her too. I want to take him with me to see her. Brenda peeked at Chris's face, trying to get a read on him. She wanted Chris to love her so badly, the same way she loved him. But she was afraid that all that love had disappeared, and in its place, all she was left with was fear. Chris pushed off the couch and straightened. All right. Do one last thing for me and you can visit her since the money is ready. Brenda's eyes widened. The million? Chris didn't miss the way the gold digger perked up at the mention of money. Yes, the million. Brenda smiled. What do I have to do? Brenda needed that million dollars. And she needed the freedom that leaving the state would give her. With the money, and without Chris's men watching her every move, she might even be able to fake that antenatal report and hire someone to steal Sabrina's baby when it was born. Chris cleared his throat. <sighs> and it's Sabrina's birthday on Saturday. At the Crystal Hotel? She doesn't have many friends, so I want you and your father to come. Brenda's face drained of color. You can't be serious. Of course the favor had to do with Sabrina. Why would she want me at her birthday party? Chris smoothed out his shirt. She knows I'm inviting you and she's fine with it. Brenda stacked her hands on her hips. Chris, I don't want to attend your ex-wife's birthday party. You have more time for her than you do for me. Chris kept his face calm. I will have time for you now. The pressure has reduced in the office, so starting tomorrow, I will spend the night here. Chris didn't tell her he needed to stay here to collect the evidence he'd need from the penthouse or that he wanted to make sure Brenda and her father didn't weasel out of attending the party. Brenda smirked. You promise? Chris forced a smile even though he secretly wanted to wring her lying neck. Why wouldn't I? Brenda beamed. Okay, I'll talk to my dad. Chris needed to be certain Kurt didn't refuse. Tell him he has to come if he wants the money. Then I'll arrange all the flight details to see your mother. But if you two don't show, then the offer is off the table. Brenda sucked in a shaky breath. Okay, I'll tell him. Chris glanced at his watch and grimaced. I have to get back to the office, but I'll see you tomorrow evening. Brenda walked him to the door. She stopped beside him. Can I have a hug goodbye? She didn't wait for his reply and wrapped her arms around him from behind. Chris stiffened and forced himself to remain quiet. Anger boiled in his gut, and he pulled away as quickly as he could. As soon as he arrived at his office, he changed out of the clothes he'd been wearing. The thought of wearing the same clothes that Brenda touched made him queasy. He scrubbed extra hard in the shower and lay down in the little bed in the attached bedroom. He left the lights on and calmed himself by gazing at Sabrina's pictures until he fell asleep. The next morning, he woke up early and dressed. Then he headed to the little cafe where he'd planned to meet with his newest employee before they both drove to Sabrina's place. It was a stroke of genius to hire someone for Sabrina. With them under his employ, he could ask the woman to spy on Sabrina and report back to him. Now Chris would have another set of eyes in place to keep track of the woman he loved when he couldn't be around personally. A maid poked her head in Sabrina's room. Excuse me, miss. Chris's car just pulled into the driveway. Sabrina yawned and climbed out of bed, not bothering to change out of her pajamas. She told Chris she wasn't working today, but it seemed like he forgot. She padded down the stairs to the door, planning to tell him again. Sabrina walked barefoot out the door and tapped on the driver's side window. Chris rolled it down and smiled at her. Sabrina yawned again and rubbed her eyes. Chris, I'm not working today. <sighs> Did you forget? Chris smiled. That shouldn't stop me from checking on you and the baby. Sabrina shook her head, wishing she was still in bed until Matilda arrived with the stylist. We're fine, as you can see. She leaned down, and that's when she spotted the woman in the passenger seat. All the sleepiness left her in an instant. Who was this strange woman in Chris's car? She hadn't even changed out of her pajamas yet. Why would he bring someone to her house this early? Why would Chris be with another woman at this hour? That's it for today, guys. If you want to inspire me more, you can buy me a puppy. Thank you for listening.